Well, I, I noticed it, but I was just like, okay. There's a Templar. Truly. Ooh, weird noise, weird, weird, weird mic, but I think it's because you're talking through, yeah, your head. <laughs> ah, yes, very good. As you should. Okay. Cool. Uh, I forgot to put in subscribers for August, so we actually got a double subscriber hit. So we've got a, uh, we got a big, uh, we jumped from level two to level four. Uh, in the spell bank, so we'll roll for that first. Early on, and oh, you know what? I should check my seven cam. Oh no, seven camera's gonna go crazy. Well, I should still try to get it. In. I should try to at least get close. So, because it will go to three, three, and two. So, Luna, Luna will stay where she is. Oh, good lord. My... I'm just gonna have to do it in studio mode when he gets here. and figure. I'm just gonna have to figure it out on the fly. Because, yeah. <laughs> we'll do it live. We'll totally do it live. So anyway, yeah, I can barely... The only problem is I can barely hear you, good guy. But you are uh, welcome to... Uh, to uh, lurk over our uh, <laughs> over our intro. <laughs> I was gonna say y'all avoided it, sort of. <laughs> Cool, cool. We got about 40 seconds. If y'all are ready, we will pop on over here in just a momentito. We're switching anyway. <laughs> And we're live. I was already live because apparently y'all were hearing me. So uh, <laughs> we are uh, going to get going here and uh, start with this week's episode of The Vice. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining in with us. And uh, let's go around and meet our cast. Uh, we will start with our uh, early risers with Mr. Dragons Arcades. Hello, everyone. I am Dragons Are Cats, playing Vidar Degprin, I mean Lycrin, um, expert warlock, hexblade of the alleyway, I mean the Soulforge Eclipse, Lysephia, and we're ready to raise, get it, the roof in this place. The roof, yeah, that's what we're going yeah. to raise. Uh, yeah, because my girlfriend's dead. Eh, pretty much. Next up, we have... Templar Warden. Oh, I am Templar Warden. I'm playing Hidden by Axel, the Tabaxi Wizard, who is not dead um, and will not die and will not turn to a lich either. Um, yeah, he's got a lies. couple of things to deal with. Did you see what I have to deal with? Good morning. Good morning. I'm playing him, and this is going to be interesting. It is. Next up, we have NNG9. Hello, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, lovely viewers. I am NNG9, local Puntress, and I also play Luna, our water genasi monk slash cleric, who's yeah, I'm kind of just fine. It's fine. No big. That's fine. Uh, next up, we have Good Guy Pie, and I've got lawnmowers outside my door, so I'm going to be muting my mic on and off. So let me know if I forget to unmute it. 
Hello everyone, I'm Good Guy Pie, and I will be playing Luck Gold Hard Adventurous Road now, all the way from Elevation Pit. Surprise! Got you. Totally didn't know it was you at all, dude. Boom. Thought we had a new. <laughs> it was yeah, me at, all wow. along. It was me all along. Wow. Got them. Hadn't been for those meddlesome Boom. kids, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, next it up. Is I, Gold Heart! The whole time. Uh, next up, we have Tree Hugging Druid. Hello, I am Turking Druid. I'm playing the currently dead silly role Ren. We'll see what happens. Honestly, I don't know if she's gonna live or die. <laughs> well, I, I mean, you know she died. Well, she's already We're, dead. Well, the question I is whether she will live again. Um, but uh, I am Tall Squall. I am your DM and. Uh, you know, leader of assassins uh, of assassins against the party uh, from last uh, episode. We uh, are a uh, Dungeons and Dragons Fifth Edition uh, live play group here. We uh, do our channel one hundred run our channel one hundred percent for charity. Uh, this month we are supporting one of our favorites, Mental Health America. They are a wonderful organization that uh, advocates for. Um, early diagnosis of mental conditions, just as we often do for physical conditions uh, in your physical health, is to keep tabs on your mental health as well. They have lots and lots of resources. You can just follow the link right down below. If you'd like to donate to affect our game, you can donate and uh, go down to the little shopping list, tell us what you would like to donate, and we'll get to the players. If you just want to uh, put some money into the pot, you can put it into our spell bank, which we currently just put our uh, subscribers in. Subscriptions also go there as well, so uh, let me play the little redo it uh, button here. And we had, uh, for the, actually for August and September, uh, so uh, we had, woohoo, $140 uh, donated by our subscribers. So uh, thank you all very much out there. Um, subscriptions count double towards our spell bank. So that bumped our uh, spell bank up by 280 bucks. And so that puts us at $480, which is a level four spell. So um, we are gonna get this started uh, with rolling up for that spell. Uh, if I could get somebody, whoever would like to uh, roll it, why don't we go with uh, Vidar as he died in the first five minutes and uh, <laughs> and laid dead in an alley covered in, uh, half covered in uh, oil of etherealness last time. He was unconscious in an alley, not dead. Boo hoo. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah she, I was, I was going to say, I was going to say Jeanette. Next, she rolled last week, she, if you recall, I believe. Yeah, yeah. but she's dead. I'm on your side. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what are, what are we? Uh, what are you we need doing? to roll me a D three first. Two. On a two, now roll me a D twenty, please. Ooh, Thirteen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13. Interesting. Utility spell, locate creature. Mm. 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 That's tasty. That is a tasty one, isn't it? Mm. I'm, I'm going to have to remind myself because I have a feeling, well, no, you guys might be building for the big one since we said we weren't going to roll over again. So um, that could be interesting. Could be very interesting. Uh, so anyway, uh, so we have locate creature going on there, um, and um, I think that is it for announcements. Um, actually, I do want to do an announcement real quick for pun pun believable uh, pun believable name, who last night uh, checked into the old uh, WoW stream that I was doing and donated $20. Uh, I missed it on the uh, stream because of the way that my WoW setup is. The alerts don't pop up and basically slap me in the face to let me know that people have done things. So let me do the old replay on that one. Don't know if they're out there in the uh, in the audience, but pun believable name, that's pun believable. And fits right in with the theme of, very much the theme of our station. So thank you so much. And... Um, Let's uh, 
roll that intro and get ourselves ready to start up what's going to be a very interesting day, I believe. Uh, session last time let's uh, sort of recap what's been going on um, end of two sessions ago we had the ghost a unknown figure uh, believed to be a member of the obsidian order that had been tracking and following the party lots of different theories on how they were able to do that throughout the entire uh, journey that they have gone on but we discovered at the end of two sessions ago, this is in fact a spirit that had inhabited uh, Tree Hugging Druid's character, Cilia. At the very end of the episode, uh, basically slit her throat uh, as a high level assassin, um, knew exactly how to do it uh, quite effectively, and uh, took over her body, so uh, possessed her truly dead corpse at that time. She then, the ghost, as is one to do when you leave the Order of Assassins, went out to exact payment from all the people that Cillian knew and headed off first to uh, Vidar, which she uh, pretty much, yeah, laid out right, <laughs> right from the beginning. Uh, and... Uh, because of that, and because of the type of attack that was used, the psychic nature of the uh, attack that was used, shorted out all the telepathic communication that we have in the party. The party was split multiple directions. Uh, Cilia uh, Iska, while in the sort of fate scape that she had entered into, saw that there were four other assassins basically in town, and two of which had moved off to go elsewhere. 
one of them attacked uh, Luna and Luck as they were out by the southwestern gate. The other one went after Axel and Riley, who was with the horses out to the, I'm sorry, the east of town, yes. And uh, Iska, seeing just how bad things were, was able to identify and using a donated uh, boon from way back, almost a year and a half ago, decided to use a twist of fate um, within this fate scape. And upon doing that, found herself no longer in, trapped in this sort of landscape of fate itself that she was trying to untangle to help save Florian. And um, also as she left, noticed that the two other assassins in town were suddenly unaccounted for. Turns out they were lying in wait uh, as these assassins seem to work in teams. So we then had Luna and Luck against two of these assassins and Axel and Riley against two. The ghost was thwarted at going and taking and having an easy kill on Iska's body uh, by just expelling her from the ring and stabbing her in the heart. Instead found this uh, the hitchhiker bobcat of uh, Iskrin, of Isk of Iskrin's now the Dars uh, and uh, basically uh, something strange had obviously occurred um, the Dar had been apparently in a change of fate decided to leave Iska's body up in the cloak and fireball to allow the bobcat its home back inside the ring saved Iska's life, and the battle continued. One after another, the party went unconscious. Death-saving throws were made. Some death-saving throws were lost. But at the very end, as by some quick action by Templar Warden, using one of his dragon runes, the blood rune, to freeze blood, uh, basically putting someone into a uh, stasis, uh, was able to knock out Iska's body throwing the ghost out from it. They then Silius. tried to... Cilia's body. Cilia, I'm sorry, Cilia's body. Uh, they then went uh, on to face the ghost and the two assassins in the field, and from out of some sort of hiding invisibility field, uh, two strangers showed up and assisted with some fairly impressive magics. The ghost was finally taken down uh, by uh, Axel, yes? Final blow is Axel on the ghost? Yep. Mind spike. Yep, mind spike on uh, by Axel. And uh, so the two strangers came up, introduced themselves as Rian and Nate. And Iska sort of went quiet and wide-eyed, Axel confused, Riley covering them with a bow that he's not great at. <laughs> Poor guy, couldn't roll anything. He's a kid. But that is where we're going to pick up our episode. So here is sort of where we are to set the scene. In, the al in an alley in the market quarter, Vidar lies in a pool of blood, mixing with oil of, ethereal of etherealness, basically assumed to be passed out by the sort of flow of people taking a shortcut through this alley as he's been sort of pushed over to the side, unconscious, but alive. Across the town, guards attracted by the noise of a large object falling out of the sky find luck wounds being sewn up by a small robot as broken golden wings dissolve into radiant light among the crates and barrels that he felt on that have been shattered by his weight nearby luna 
stabilized but unconscious, lies half obscured by this debris that was thrown up by Lux fall from the sky, her clothes covered in her own blood. Unseen by those entering the alley, two dark figures silently disappear into the shadows as more guards and bystanders start to come into the alley to see what has occurred. On a rooftop, another dark figure regains control of his body, still shaking in fear, looking up at the sky, leaps off the roof and dives into a closet underground opening that he can find. Closest underground opening, not closet. And then, over in the field, to the west of town, the body of Celia lies stock still on the ground, unbreathing. Iska sits on the ground, uncomprehending that it's her own hand that lays at her side. It's the bow that she plays her violin with, still clutched in its grasp. Her bleeding stump. Incomprehensible to her and the shock of these two people who've just introduced themselves. A dappled gray stallion watches on. It's Axel, along with Riley, stand there protectively over Celia's body. And Iska's strange demeanor of all that's happened to her. And these two strangers reveal themselves from their cloaks. But we're going to start back in that alley with Vidar. Vidar, you feel someone slapping your face. Hey! 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 Mm -hmm. Walk it off, buddy! Mm -hmm. There is a short noblin over top of you who's got you one hand by sort of the collar slapping your face. Hey! You can't sleep out here. This is a nice part of town, buddy. <laughs> what? Hey, I don't care what you drank last night. We're trying to run a nice, uh, nice town here. You can't just go uh, flopping yourself down here all covered in oil in the middle of the street, buddy. Um, hey, you do uh, you, but just not in my quarter of the town, okay? I've got a noodle cart to set up over here. Uh, noodles? You all right, buddy? You don't look so yeah. good. Yeah. Uh, fine. He goes to roll over and pushes weight onto his uh, left hand and then just falls. Just <laughs> like the pain hits his hand and as he reels from it and tries to prop himself up on the elbow, he looks at his hand and oh, it all comes flashing back. And pulls his shirt up as he rolls over onto his side and sees the cauterized wound of the natural 20 given to him again by Celia's lava tongue because what else could it be? You ain't and drunk, just, are you, buddy? I, I wish I was. Oh. What the hell hit you? What is... What can make a... What can make a... Whatever that awful thing through your gut is wait that happened too that's not old that's new oh uh, that's very new oh. <laughs> that's just dude is there a finger around here somewhere i, I don't know tilt his hands blood oh hey, okay. dude you're bleeding all over yourself you're bleeding all over me <sighs> here and uh he basically cracks open like a uh a little capsule it's almost kind of like smelling salts type idea and uh oh come on um it heals you for three it's basically like a a, a just a wake up type idea just a tiny bit of heal um it's not doing much for the blood but he's just like Oh wow, that's that's potent. Um, <sighs> yeah, it's how I kick people out of the bar. Um, 
bar. Oh, I could go for a drink right now. You wow. don't need a drink right now. Yeah, dude, let me help you. Oh, God, you're a mess. I am. This is what happens when you get hit by your girlfriend. What the? This was, a, lo this was a lover's call? I don't know. Damn, um, man. Did, did you see a uh, high, uh, high elf go past? Dark uh, clothes. I mean, there's lots hair. of... There's lots of high elves around here. The, the town is Scar. packed. They're all headed down to the conclave, buddy. Um, ah, silly elf. Damn it. Ugh. Dude, let me, uh... Let me give you a hand here. Um, we should get you inside, and I, God, I hope one of the rats didn't get your finger. There's kind of, we, we don't have much of a rat top problem in town. It's not too bad, but you know, the, 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 there's still some. We are out in the middle of the fields here, but uh, you're gonna want to find that if you want to uh, attach that back on, buddy. I mean, uh, just. I never thought blood would there be so much blood. Why is there so much blood? Well, you kind of kind of got a hole in your chest, buddy. I mean, it's all black and like not too bad, but I mean, I it, I can fit a whole bowl of noodles in that hole in the in your in your chest, buddy. And he struggles to his feet and um, whoa, oh, pushes whoa, whoa! Up. Do me a Constitution check as you try to stand. Yeah. Eleven. Uh, on eleven, uh, he's having to sort of hold you up now. You know, he is goblin slash gnome size, so <laughs> trying to hold you up. He goes, "Hey, you, uh, yeah, lean on me." Ugh. Oof. You smell like you smell like my Thursday night special with all that <laughs> cooked that happened there in your chest, buddy. Don't say nothing about my cooking, okay? <laughs> I don't know you. <laughs> It's not the first time this is happening. He pulls, like, lifts up the shit, lifts up the shirt, and shows that right across from that wound on the other side of his belly, there's a big, very similar wound. To what, what kind of bedroom games do you play at? I mean, I know people over on the other side of the vice are kind of strange. I mean, you are a moon elf, and I I hear that they're into some sort of crazy stuff over there in uh in Falcon's Crest, but. Damn, oh. buddy. Falcon Crest has some interesting sides. I'll tell you that much. The cold sun's there can kick your butt. I guess only, so. Only because I know, because I lived with one for a while. I still do. Wait, you paid for this? Dude, what? you are no. all kinds of... Hey, if you can afford that, I'm going to... Ch I'm, you, know, I'm, you know, I expect a tip for letting you come recover in my restaurant... Uh, I will give. I'll get you something. First, I need to find my girlfriend who stabbed me and get my money back. So th this was over Thank money. <laughs> I don't know. We were. We had a plan that something was going to happen that we were planning to do, and we were in it together. And now here I am. What's your name, friend? I'm Nob. Knob of Noblin's Noodles. I met a Noblin. Well, well, I didn't, but a friend. No. I did, but I didn't meet a Noblin in West. Oh! My cousin! Yeah, yeah. I met you down at Restoration Station. That's the one. <laughs> oh, oh, dude. Ugh. Maybe the he rats will clean up that. Well, or the cats. Oh, by the way, is this big old cat yours? And you see the bobcat sitting across the street from you, just sort of watching on. He sort of was, he was mewling. That's why I came over to check on you. He was screaming like a banshee back here. Oh, I love that cat. I mean, just <laughs> clops back on the ground. <laughs> Uh, we got to get you out of here and try to get someone who can fix you up a little bit. Um, um, well, we could go. No, we can't go there. Yeah, no. Agatha doesn't like me anymore. I caught her eating a rat one day in the back alley. 
You would have thought that she died and gone to heaven the way she ripped the head right off of that thing. But eh, she doesn't like I mean, me anymore. Scandalous, she says. Dragons are predatory creatures. Oh yeah, yeah. That uh, her yeah. boyfriend, that Ash Drake. You know, he uh. Boyfriend. Oh, everyone knows, but she doesn't admit it. Fair enough. Yeah, I heard there was a wonderful noodle place around here. Well, yeah, my noodle Those place. Yummies? Of course. I have a hankering. Don't noodles. you even think about the other noodle places. There's another noodle place? No, there is not never another noodle them. place. Never heard of them. Yeah, you just be quiet now. You're obviously delusional thinking you need to go somewhere else for noodles. Yeah, let me no, take you to my to my place. And Wonderful. So very strong, actually, uh, Knob, for a small creature. Hauls you up all but... All, it's almost like he's fireman carrying you, but your feet are still on the ground type idea. So heavy, heavy lean. Oh, uh, thank you. Is there... I mean, I'm going to look around to try to find my ring... Uh, if, if the cat's here, then it should be here too. Well, Where's my ring? I, I didn't see any ring, and just between you and me, I kind of thought you were just a drunk guy, so I did go through your pockets, and yeah, you don't have any money, you don't have a whole lot on you, buddy. <laughs> That's the way I like to keep it. <laughs> Simple and effective. I hide my things. So you, there was a ring on that finger that you're missing. So we're looking, we're looking for a finger with a ring still on it. Eh, that, I've that's seen, okay. I've no, seen weirder. No, I, I shouldn't have to be able to. I shouldn't. It's it's not a problem. And I'm gonna hold up, hold out my hand, and attempt to summon Lyle alongside the ring because the ring's a part of Lyle. Um. You summon Lyle. However, in the hole where the ring can fit in, it's not really a, it's not a part of Lyle. They can be integrated, but they, uh, you see the hole where the ring would sock it into is not there. But Lyle is there. Hey, friend. It's not there. The situation is quite dire. I don't know if you're aware, but... Uh, well, you're aware about Celia, but there were other assassins as well. Luck is unconscious, so is Luna over by the gate at the other side of town. Iska's hand is chopped off, and Axel are out in the field. There was a coordinated attack against all of us. Oh. Of course I was the first to go. You look like shit. I feel like shit. You can feel this. Um... Hey, Loon. Hey, friend. Do you, yeah, mind you sticking, do you mind sticking with me just a little bit more before we make a detour for noodles? I know two other friends who would love some noodles right now. What do you think this is? A delivery service? You're half dead, buddy. Yeah, half dead and on my way to noodles. Think about that. You're crazy. Good yes. crazy, but crazy. I need some. Where do you need me to go? Where are you gonna try to walk to? I wanna. First, uh, we gotta find you. We gotta find you someone with like a healer, buddy. I know a healer as well. We're gonna go see. Are they close? (laughs) I use the telepathic connection between all of us to try to think about where. Lyle's uh, like, luck. Uh, Does this work? <laughs> Can we triangulate positions? Uh, luck and Luna are on the far side of town, and Iska is in the field to the west. They're a good 15, 20 minutes. Well, more like an hour the way you're moving. But how far away? Are you asking DM wise how far away? Yeah. Oh, DM and Lyle wise. Uh,. Not quite far enough to reach, but we could get pretty close. Uh, just wondering they're about I... uh, about a half mile, but uh, I think five hundred feet's not going to mean a whole lot. Sure. 
Uh, let's just get there while we can, if we can. I have I have seven very happy customers who will come to Noodles if we can go see my friends. What, do you think my place doesn't get any business, buddy? No, I'm just trying to give you more. Guaranteed. They're going to be half dead like you? And all we'd want would be Noodles. Well, I'm worried Noodles you eat right now would leak out all over the floor. <laughs> Don't worry, I, I can clean it up. I'm going to try to cast prestidigitation to clean up a little bit of blood. Uh, you are able to uh, do me a uh, arcana check at disadvantage and a constitution save to see if just the pain. If you're able, I love it. Twenty-one <laughs> and a fifteen. Uh, if anything, Vidar knows how to keep clean and make himself look presentable. Just hunched over a little bit. And just hide the pain, hide the pain, conceal, don't feel. That's how we do it. Conceal, don't feel. That's catchy. You should write a song. Um. <laughs> I think I might. <laughs> and um, so where are you? Are you trying to go to Knobs? Are you trying to go? Are you trying to go to Luna and Luck? We'll go to Luna and Luck. As much as I want to go to just hang out in a noodle bar half dead. Okay, so uh, you, the two of you, um, start to stagger out of the alley. We are going to jump across now over actually to uh, Luna and Luck. Um, Luck, Luna, you both come to. Stand by. Formulas. Up arrow. Um, Luna, you, uh, not looking nearly as bad as luck, uh, come to as you have a uh, guard, one of these, uh, the crossing guards uh, here in Sojourn's Crossing, uh, pouring a small healing potion, uh, giving you three points of healing. Uh, luck, um, laying on these barrels, having fallen out of the sky, looking quite broken and beaten, and uh, with this strange... Um, uh, you know, sort of basically at death's door, truly, um, with this strange little robot uh, assisting uh, our fed a potion that gives you nine points of healing. What happened to you, friends? Assess. That one, yep. <laughs> You're trying to tell me there's assassins. Was assassins. We once. didn't stab ourselves. Well, how do I know you? <laughs> wasn't some lovers quarrel between the two of you? You stabbed each other. Because I'm a married man. And I am not interested. Even more reason to be stabbing each other. <laughs> I... Uh, and I think it, it, Luda is still kind of, uh, still kind of out of it. But I think maybe falling back on a little bit of her quarters on training, like change her facial expression a little bit. Does it look like he could afford my services? I am very broke. In multiple ways right now. <laughs> um, I'm going to roll a... Uh, let me just roll a d20 to see uh, if he buys all, this. All the more reason to stab. <laughs> uh his uh, insight actually reads you correctly that you are a court have had been trained by a courtesan he's a worldly enough so uh, he uh, goes oh yes yeah, probably not um, I'm both insulted and happy that you accept that <laughs> you say assassins yes two yeah. of them and might I ask why they'd want to assassinate a courtesan and... A retired miner. Retired awfully early, didn't you? We've... It's been a long life. <laughs> My son is yeah. older than you, probably. Retired from never going to work, maybe? Uh, in this, it's a long story. Like the assassins was a long story. 
Well, quite short. They tried to kill us and failed. I they could nearly did. them, too, but I doubt they're still here. Shady black cloaks, crossbows, daggers, the usual. So, typical assassin out of any one of the books that they sell on the wagons that come through here about the intrigue of the realm. I, what, uh, I, I think can't. I'm just gonna kind of like, um, I think probably like cure wounds or self to top up some more. Okay. Uh, and like get standing. <laughs> and then kind of look the guy, not be right in his face, but just look the guy directly in his directly in his eye. I've been trained in certain things and I've seen many things. It's it so hard to believe that some people would not want those things known. I, I just know people. <laughs> he sort of looks at Luna and again on that insight check is, you know, almost feeding himself uh, as he Obviously, he's a reader. Uh, mm -hmm. From all of a sudden, he's kind of like a little bit like, "Ooh, I've I found a uh, I, I found you know my own personal story here." And uh, but on the same note, he knows that how that what ha usually happens to the guards in most of those stories. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, you uh, yeah, go ahead and feel free to cast that cure wounds on yourself as well. Yes. And um, uh, he kind of looks at this young big. Uh, strapping kind of farm boy of a dude um, talking about how he's an old man and you and he's just like look I don't have time to get into whatever business is going on with you if it's a danger to the rest of the town come down to the guard station make a report please but We've got another 50 wagons coming in today that need to go and another 20 going out the other side. We understand you're busy. We appreciate your assistance. Hi. We will take our business elsewhere. It would be appreciated. I don't want to see you making any more trouble or getting caught up in assassins or plots in my town. If I were to ever see you again, I would hope it were under far more pleasurable circumstances. He blushes <laughs> and gets all flustered and he's uh -huh. like, uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, it, it kind of looks at you and do me a perception check. Okay. <laughs> Perception. Nope, she's really injured. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, you don't happen to notice. However, luck, uh, just with your passive perception being as long as it is, you don't know where the sound comes from, but it's almost as though you hear someone as though they've checked their coin purse and the clanging of coins and sort of like trying to <laughs> figure out whether or not they've got enough, uh, how much money they actually have in their coin purse as this guard uh, walks out of the alley. <sighs> Dang it, I wish my perception was better. <laughs> oh, oh, well. Can I get a hand or two? Or six? Uh, Luna will help get luck up and then mentally to him, since it appears that the telepathy is back on. Yep. Um, just like, we need to find the others and get out of here. <clears throat> Right. right. So, yeah, right. Um. You do hear in your head as you use telepathy, um, Lyle. Oh, there you are. Um, Vidar is up, barely. He's with Nob. They're trying to get make their way to you. Um, oh. He's not doing well. Would anybody like noodles? I would like noodles if I wasn't in so much pain. I would also like my finger back, but it's not going to happen. I think a rat took it. Why would the rat take one? Okay, I guess we've got a lot of figuring out to do. Um, Axel, 
you are starting to you are hearing some of this conversation if you're paying attention if there's too much going on in front of you you can uh either opt to chime in or almost put it on you know put them on hold uh as uh these conversations are happening sort of on the uh, open channel um so uh are we not just straight up leaving uh we've got Celia here Do we want to stay or do we want to leave? Wait, what? Celia, she came for, uh, well, me, me and Riley, and um, we took Is down okay? the ghost. Uh, the ghost? She's dead. But I have, we got her preserved, so. Oh. 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 Um, else is alright though. Iska, we just need some healing and she'll get her hand back. Uh, alright, that's fine. Sorry, um, what? <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, Iska is here, and so what? is a gentleman named uh, Rian Gilderloin, um, oh. who has a horse called Palshurian and a friend what? called Nate, and what? something is very oh, weird. Oh, what has. What? You in the... Oh, no. Thank you. I have to. Yeah, uh, we're out in the field where we. Oh, okay. Make. This is this is interesting. All right, let's let's and go potions. pick up the doll first. I'm going to sit on a corner of where am I? Uh, Gilda Street and Vice Road. Oh, Vice right. Road. Uh, you were heading from Knobs. I know which direction you're coming from. Okay. I'm there. And I'm assuming with all the cartography movement, that was pretty much. Oh, yeah, you know exactly where it is. Yeah. So, <laughs> oh, go. like, Luna, after, like, topping herself up a little more, she will just hook her arm around Luck and zip off. Okay. Um, Cute. The, uh, yeah, so the two of you all start uh, going through. It is sort of almost a stutter stop because there are so many people in town i mean even back alleyways and not to mention um at this point i mean i guess i should ask um you are welcome to take back alleys but that means you are going to be in alone and dark alleys uh no she's not she's gonna go through the crowd and actually she's kind of counting on because like she doesn't have her hood down anymore she's kind of counting on the fact that people will want to avoid touching her to move quicker yep and uh, uh do me an intimidation check no, I'm not good at that. Okay. <laughs> uh, or I can let you could use your cortis. I'll let you use cortisone training for this for moving through a crowd. I prefer that. That has a little bit of a better. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> on ele- yeah, on eleven. I mean, you're doing the best you can. This is uh, you know, this is navigating a theme park in the on July Fourth weekend as yeah. and people are moving in the opposite direction. It seems as everywhere you trying. want to try to go. Uh, but you do start making your way across. Um, Vidar, um, Nob looks at me and goes, Hey, who are you talking to? Oh, and where are we going? Okay, so we're, the, we're now going to just sit right here and Vidar <laughs> just slumps up against the wall of a building, blood smear, whatever. Goes, so, friend, friends of mine, uh, Luck, Goldheart, and Luna... Wait. Luck Goldheart and Luna? You know Luck and Luna? Those yeah, are my Luna friends. Miles. They're my friends. Why they hang- why'd they be hanging out with someone like you? Uh, I ask man. myself that question every day. <laughs> Great question. Literally as he says that, we, Luna is coming in to the alley <laughs> with Luck. <laughs> with a step of the wind. <laughs> You know this guy? This um, leaky, oiled up, burnt stomach guy? Uh, My advisors have uh, told me to say, on a legal basis, yes, I know him. On an illegal basis, no. Technically, I am. I actually understand that, Luck. (laughs) Hello, no. Sorry for troubling you with our friend and Luna will go to try and get Iskrin up. Uh, Vidar. <laughs> get Vidar. 
she goes to try and get Esper, and then remembers he's not there, there. and then gets the dark. Yes. <laughs> She realizes, oh crap, I have to be careful with this one. This one spills blood Pretty on me. Pretty much like she was just going to go toss over. like, right, you're actually not important. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is someone who feels pain and who bleeds and has viscera and other things. Let's go to the toilet. Uh, needs to breathe. Bodily functions. Can you imagine it? Yeah. yeah. And uh, Luna knowing that. As I though, wave, I say, this body's so tedious. At knowing that Nob is a business and she will kick him some amount of money for his trouble. Oh. I don't know. Luna, always a pleasure doing business with you. Always a pleasure to see you, no matter what, but you always understand. And he tucks it into, uh-huh. <laughs> tucks the gold into his pocket. Uh, this one keeps talking like he wants to try my noodles, or like there's someplace else in this town to get noodles. I know of no such place. Exactly. I'm... What madness. Truly. He, I thought it was just a belly wound. Obviously, it's a head wound as well. It might be chronic. Kind of you look. have no idea. You have the patience well, of a saint, Luna. You do. Well, regardless, Silly has stabbed me again. What? He lifts up the shirt. What did you do this time? Yeah, it's just like, that's... <laughs> It's like death doesn't necessarily. We're, we're over here getting killed by assassins and you're having a lover's quarrel? <laughs> See? And did you notice he was all covered in oil when I found him? I'm not saying, what? I'm just saying. Okay. Luda just has like a perfectly plank face that, like, whatever. I don't judge people for what they do. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, we this time. It. Meet up with the rest. We will be sure to stop by at another time. It seems we have yeah. some pressing matters to attend to. Always a table for you, and I actually do appreciate uh, when you're not, um, he sort of points to Vidas, so uh, leaky. <laughs> Blood has started to soak back through your robes. Oh, mm. oh, oh good. Yeah. Lena, please. We got and a very handsy problem. Healing. Uh, no, she can carry it with you because you're you're yeah. Healer wounds at one. Get eight. Yeah, I look I look over to Nob and say, Luna is the only person I trust to, well, to heal of this quality. To be honest, she was a she did she cured and scarified this one here. That's twice now. History repeats itself. He doesn't have many friends. I kind of picked up on that. This they cat saved him, though, and you see the big bobcat there. Oh. Oh, hello again. This sort of looks at you. Yeah, it's one of those days. Mm. It sort of actually looks at you way too intelligently and with a very knowing nod <laughs> and starts to pad its way uh, almost leading its way through uh, the market area down towards uh, the gate that would be uh, that would head out sort of towards where um... and actually we got a we got a bird who's going to be here oh. in just a moment um, so uh Nob uh, waves you all goodbye. Uh, I'll uh, save you a table. It's been crazy, but uh, I always all got right. a spot for you. Thank you. I'm going to do a little bit. Oh, not too much camera stuff. It's a shiny bird. Catch it. Woo. Hey, while we're getting reset up, why don't you introduce yourself, uh, bird, if you've got, if you've got a, if you, or I can give you a second. No, no, I'm here. I'm just setting up everything, getting ready to load it. Hi, I'm Bird versus Plane. I'm you are listening. a little bit quiet. I don't know if you can bump your Hi, game. Is this any better? Yes. Uh, okay, I'm Bird versus Plane. I'm playing Iskatol. Uh, she nearly got murdered by her friend, Possessed Celia, who cut off her hand that she needs to perform and do any kind of magic last time. So things are bad for me just in the game, in real life, just all all around. Just a, just a rough day for me, huh? 
<laughs> no, I'm, I'm excited to be here. Um, Luck, I'm sorry that you can't afford the services of someone like Luna. Uh, Vidar, I'm glad my Luby boy survived. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Luby boy. <laughs> it is good to be back. <laughs> it's so about that. I love the shenanigans. <laughs> So, uh, as we get people finally rested in their spots, uh, we will tune in with Axel. You've heard that they are, that the rest of the party is heading your way. Um, Cilia with the rune is etched there lying in the ground. The, uh, other assassin that you were able to kill, um, is just, uh, pummeled by the force damage from the arcane barrage their body is there as well the horses um some of them ran off a little ways because of the wall of fire that occurred but um for the most part you can quickly uh look around and see the um uh the six horses uh close by are easily round up they were trained well enough not to just completely run off after the events of the uh, battle, and quite frankly, the battle went sure. pretty quickly. Cool. Um, so the, we've got friend is talking to Ian and um, Nate. Uh, we have friends on the way. Um, we have. <sighs> Forgive us if we're not going to let you get any closer at this point. Oh. Are you, do you have any healing magic or anything like that? I am mainly an arcane trained. Right, right. Uh, I have a potion uh, or two. Um, that's, that's fine. Um, do you know anyone named Florian? Florian Gildeloin? It's the same names. He looks at you. Y yes. Why do you ask for Florian? Um, because, um, we, we know him in town, and it's just the same name, just, yeah. Just... You know a Florian Gilderloin from in town? Uh, I think I do. Everything's a bit weird right now. Do me a wisdom saving throw, Templar. Hey, read my mind. Ha! Um, on a nat one, Rion looks at you extremely intently you're not lying how are you not lying Florian Florian Rian okay something's going on here and I don't know what it is Iska you were supposed to be uh, un unavailable What's, what's going on? Um, actually, you know what? Never mind about that. Where's your hand? I get, I've got a potion here. Uh, yes, you do uh, see Eska's Let's hand get the hand healed first. Lying yeah. there on the ground. Yeah, Eska, tell us how you're reacting. This, There's almost an eerie silence that has gone across the field. You, I mean, straight up, there's got to be this moment of like, her coming to, she didn't realize the hand was gone. And then this whole concept of Rian, Gilderloin, and Balshirian, like, one, if she wasn't in physical shock before, like, she's in mental shock now at the ramifications of her foolish and ignorant actions. <laughs> um, so she's just kind of like, I don't know, almost vacant, like staring at like the consequence of what she has done. And it's Axel mentioning her hand that's like, makes no sense until she looks down and it's like oh <laughs> oh god <laughs> and I, is it nearby is her severed hand on the ground it's laying on the ground still clutching 
your bow. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's almost as though you see your bow because it's quite large compared to your hand and almost instinctively would go to pick up the bow and there is a hand on it. Make me a wisdom saving throw. Yeah, no, that's fair, I think. Yeah, no, that's fair, I think. Yeah. Um, explain to me your... You can call whether you want to say you had the disadvantage or not of Iska's reaction to all of this. I, I think it's... Um... It's not like a, a a massive thing, but it is. Um, I mean, Iska reached out and screwed with the timeline, thinking she was gonna fix things, and now she's missing a hand, and she's completely screwed up several people's entire lives. So I think as she reaches down, she kind of recoils a bit, realizing it's her own hand missing, and honestly, just kind of turns to Axel. And when she turns her face, there's just like. She's not crying, but he, you, it's like that moment right before you cry of like, you can see the like shimmering tears in someone's eyes and like you can see that like her arm is like trembling a bit. She's just trembling a bit. And so she's doing everything she can to keep composure as if she meant to do any of this and is clearly just like locked up right now. Um, unsure of, God, is this even, is this, is this even salvageable? <laughs> what just happened? Uh you know, all those thoughts of like, I, that's how I do magic. It's how I play music. It's what the, it's the gun hand. That could be her entire life over right now. Yeah. Uh, Axel saying this is pretty much immediately going to sort of drop down. Basically, you know, take Siska into an embrace and be, you know, just there. <laughs> Got to support there. Um, and give her a moment, um, considering if the wound's not like bleeding out horribly all over everything i mean it's stabilized but do me a medicine check with advantage i'm giving you advantage because in your backstory we talked about how much trouble that axel got himself into and i've just got a feeling this isn't the first time that uh he might have encountered having either his own or someone else's <laughs> pieces that needed to be reattached oh, without no. Grom finding out so, oh, Grom. So on your yep, 17, 17. Um, I mean, not to mention Grom was not the most um, gentle in some of his ways that he protected things he didn't want you getting into. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Uh, you do know that uh, basic healing will reattach a clean sever, but you do know there is a, there is some time limitation to that. So that you, yep. you want to get this uh, basically get her back up to uh, over 50% uh, HP um, in order for the uh, the graft basically to be able to take um, with just healing and not have to go to deeper regeneration. Oh no. Oh, can I use a healing tide not in combat? Can you use a healing die dot in combat? Yes. Um, yes, but it's only you can use one. That's it. Yeah, that's that's the one. It's just that I've made the realization. What is he going to do? Something stupid. He's also really low health. Oh god. Um, I have a potion like on my bandolier. If Axel needs, like. Yeah. So does Axel. So, okay. um, but is this enough? Dice. So. You've. Hey, is it Iska? Iska. Alright, I'm going to help you. You have a potion. I'll be fine. And he's just going to sort of gently, like, hold on to her, her hand, gently pull over the other one. He's going to cast life transference <laughs> to make sure she gets all the health she needs. <laughs> wow. He's actually got to pull out the purple gem because he doesn't actually have a gem. Not a lich. Yep. He's healing people. He's a good guy. Um, do me a... a lich. 
dexterity. Do me a dexterity saving throw at disadvantage. Fourteen. Roll. Actually, give me a Drop second. Hand. Give me a hand. What? Just one second. Whoop! Ah, oh, butterfingers! Oh, you're healed up. Oh no. <laughs> Oh, it's the wrong way around. <laughs> oh, it's upside down. <laughs> you gotta have to learn to work with an upside down head, though. Oh, it'd be really interesting to have that in a game. Like, <laughs> you have two. You have two left heal. hands now. How bad healing works? What is the Stardust Crusaders? Oh. Um, as you pull out the gem, go ahead and cast Life Transference for me. I don't like how he said that. I can see the, the number on that and the name on that. It's 18, I don't, actually. I don't like what's happening here. As Sorry. you go to cast this, Riley, having advantage as you weren't expecting it, grabs the gem and the life transference goes from Riley into Iska. You're hurt, Dad. Let me help. That's uh, 26 healing for Iska. I don't... How's the hand doing? As Axel is it just like, oh, God damn it! <laughs> Over a little overwhelmed at this point. Um... You uh, do me a medicine check with advantage. Yep. Yeah. Sixteen. No, Seventeen. Uh, 17 um, it is. You're not super. You, you, you. This is right on the hairy edge of whether or not it's going to take you. You know there needs to be a little bit more healing in order to make right. sure, to ensure that this can is going to be okay. Can I use the healing die outside of combat? Uh, I will allow it. I said that it was allowable. It's 1d10, right? Yep. Oh, that's the wrong equipment. On a 6, uh, which I believe bumps you over the 50% mark. Right over 50%. <laughs> Inspired by Riley's courage here. In fact, we can even say that, that it is... And that it's coming from a, a being made of the life rune. Bumps. There's a little bit of extra green sort of energy that flows along this path of magic. And Iska, you... It's like... At first, it's as though you've had your hand in ice. And then it's as though, you know... we. When you're, uh, when you sleep, you know, when you've got a, some, a limb that goes to sleep and it's those just insanely deep, you know, tingles that you get as it reawakens is the feeling you feel as blood just boom and you just feel this like throbbing as though someone's like pounding on your hand, but it moves. Yeah, X was kind of basically gently like cradled your hand until you were ready to take it away from him. He's just hasn't moved. But you can see there's a little bit of presumably like Riley stand to the side of him and he's just slightly turned away and there's a little bit of on his face. And uh, I think she plays with the digits for a bit to make sure each one of them still works and she can feel and move them how she needs to. And does they're, that. They're a little I'm, stiff right now until sure. a long rest, but... But uh, in the meantime, as long as they still work, she kind of take a deep breath, look at her hand, and um, with Riley so close, kind of reach out and... Are, are you okay, toss, Iska? Toss on the top of his head. Way up high, because he's... Oh, well, yeah, he's very yeah. tall now, but she's going to do it regardless. She yeah. might get what he does for this, uh, but... <laughs> his hair now is almost sort of like this wheat grass, as it seems to nice. change most every day. Well, um, it feels good to be able to feel that. <laughs> I, 
I tried to help, but I, I, I... And you see Riley's eyes just sort of sink as though he wasn't able to keep this from happening to you. We're here. We're here and... and we can fix this. She, like, motions to Cilia's body. Yeah. You helped, kid. All right. You We're alive and we can move forwards. Just give Riley a hug. Uh, okay. Um, you all okay. hear? So no, one, no one gets through this without a few scars. All right? You all hear some crackling of underbrush and sort of the long grasses that uh, grow all over the Dragon Gust Plains as you see um, three figures limping, uh, like, probably being helped by Luna and ushered along at a quicker pace than would be normal with her step of the wind, but your three broken companions you can see we are starting to approach where you all are. Rian looks at you. But are they with you? Oh, oh, yes. I did say we were having the company. Right. Thank you again uh, for your help. Um, once we're sorted, I think we'll have this discussion that's been hanging around, I think. I have a discussion I want to have with you as well. Yeah, that's that's what I meant. Yep. <laughs> She's just like looking at Rian and just at a loss for words at this person. <laughs> yeah, I mean, about if anything, there is some actually more recognition for Iska of Rian than there is of Floria. You are very much reminded of the brash sky mage whose body you inhabited. Um, other than the fact that there is this banded, scarred tissue that's sort of discolored and dark all but right across his, uh, his eyes, or sort of like right underneath from, uh, as Axel had said before, uh, as though he'd been hit by a blight spell or a fairly powerful spell took it right in the face. Um, there is a familiarity of having inhabited his mind 90 uh, some odd years ago of him not being the broken person that you literally knew before as Florian. Um, I think she'll just look and take a minute, kind of just seeing him catch herself. Uh, just some time, please, to, uh, to take care of our friend. Again, motioning towards towards Celia. But, but then a conversation. Yes, please. Yes. Yes. And he respectfully steps back to give you all room around your fallen comrade. Okay. So everyone, the rest of the party is approaching and they all look like uh, hot garbage. Really? Uh, yeah. I think you are the most, yes, you are the most, now the most healed of all of them. <laughs> um, Vidal's wave. Yeah. <laughs> You uh, see Vidar, his wounds have been seeping again. Um, luck, I mean, describe how you are. Um, you know, you basically had your whole side opened up by a dagger in the air, and then you fell from the sky. Uh, oh, he's... Oof, yeah, it's bad. He's got, like, still splinters of wood in his hair from the crates. Um, he's sort of holding his side um, where it's there's this sort of the clove the clothing and sort of some of the elven mail has been dislodged and it sort of shows like this parts of some scars um he looks uh, a lot more scarred like he was before he turned younger in fact some more similarities of that growing 
and and he's sort of walking like with a limp at this point uh, sort of his hand looks a little sort of, fit a few of the fingers out of place and stuff how about you Luna I mean Luna's at this point you know she topped herself up some more so she she seemed worse like she's she's clearly been roughed up but she's Luna yeah <laughs> hiding it uh, and again through the pain both courtesan training and monk training that's what it's all about yep um, but yeah, so Iska, they are, they're a mess. As soon as they get close enough, then, um, to give it a shot and try to cast something that might sound a little creaky, a little sharp, a little off note at first with you know, her hands getting back, but she is going to try to cast a mass cure wounds on everyone. Okay. Uh, let's see how that go. Oh, level five. Submit. So Ooh. everyone gets 19 points of damage. Tell me about how that song sounds in the place where Isk is. It it's um it's a little rough. It's uh, those notes aren't so pure and where she would normally like, you know, hold out that that perfect tone, she knows that perfect tone isn't there. So it's almost a little rushed if that makes sense. Uh, it's more, I mean, even look at the dice, there's a, there's a, you know, a nat eight and then a nat one. Yeah. It is mostly her, it's not her playing for the sake of enjoying the music and the, 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 the purity of it. It's mostly, this is nothing but utility right now. It is all about just making sure people are fine. It is not about being glorious or beautiful. It is, uh, it's probably the spell, the, it's probably the music, the song that she has played that's most sounded just like a means of doing something without any form of beauty behind it. The notes go over, but as you said, it's almost like a recording or a someone in uh, rush the last song before the end of their, uh, their lessons or their class. Um, it is flat, not in the musical sense, but flat as in devoid of the spirit that Iska usually puts in it, but it is effective, and all of you gain 19 healing. That is a well-welcomed voice to hear. Hey. What? <sighs> uh, you're out of the ring now. And Yes. She's just sleeping, right? You're supposed to be. Ty left you. No. Why aren't you asleep? No, Cilia. I'm on about Cilia. Cilia is dead. You're fucked. She was You're possessed right? by the yeah, ghost. Yeah. Okay. She is You're... frozen. She is okay. locked there, preserved. You... <sighs> okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. What? The ghost was placing Celia's body. Right. We shut down the body. Oh, preserved shit. the body. And the ghost got free and we destroyed it. Should not much sooner. But as we walk over to we start walking forward and just say, where is she? I mean she's feet like yeah, there. She's right there. Oh, okay. <laughs> she's like there. She is like completely and utterly like, frozen like a dutcher it's like tall snow. grass in the way of a quite yeah. yeah um th there yeah. <laughs> axel would have been keeping an eye on yeah. her he's like yeah. no we're not stepping further away than five feet yeah uh, painful <laughs> takes off. Here somewhere i can't that <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> begins to take Where's off his coat sickle? <laughs> Where's the silly sickle but begins to take off his coat and begins to fold it up and sits down next to her, puts it under her head and just stares at her. <sighs> and pats her head. We can fix this, right? But as much as I hate to say it, we can fix this. Yeah, I we think can... uh, Iska will approach behind Vidar and just kind of like kneel down and just like a hand on the shoulder. She, she's, she's gonna come back. We're, we're gonna bring her back, okay? Okay. I don't know if it's in my means. I don't know how long this has been. 
probably more than a minute, so it's... I can, I can do this. I, I think right. I can do this. Uh, there's not much we can do now. She's stuck like that for a while. What did you do? Uh, like, after... Froze the body, the blood of the body, and locked her away where she cannot be hurt and she cannot act. And stasis. Of body, so some, yeah, stasis of a soul. Um, I mean, it's just her body, like clothing and belongings. It's fine, but. Yeah. Silly, <sighs> Yes, Jessica, what are we going to... Right, how, much, how much time do we have? I, I, I'm assuming the sooner that we do this, the better. Uh, we, don't, we haven't given her, her soul much time to wander or leave this place. Um, but, but, but we need everyone together. We need all of us here. Everyone needs to be here. Everyone needs... This to is be safe, here. right? We're not screwing with anything more than we usually do. Now this Emma does not look over to Rian. <laughs> <laughs> quick, quick eyes with Rian. <laughs> it's like, eh, no, I don't care. <laughs> this, 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 is, right. this is this is as safe as it gets. We're doing it here. We're doing it now. Fine then. Um, I mean, Jay, you, you tell mean, me, like, what would, uh... The, the, she can stay in the state. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna use Ray's Dead. So, yeah, you're using Ray's Dead, which is a resurrection, but it we will have, um, it is not affected by location. Um, we uh, do here for our viewers. This is our first time doing it as well. We do use Matt Mercer's uh, Fading Spirit Resurrection um, rules. Um, and so, uh, we, uh, are, uh, I mean, again, it can be done right here, but you are outside of the one minute. So it is uh, basically three people are able to uh, do a, um, a uh, contribution skill check. Um, uh, for the players, it's in the handouts if you need to refresh your memory um, with to uh, try to call out to the soul, whether it is, uh, I will sort of set the DC of what that, uh, what that um, contribution uh, would be, you roll. Uh, you roll the check. It will either affect the DC to make it higher or lower. Then the uh, final roll is just a flat D twenty. It's basically like a death saving throw with a modified DC. And whoever is this is a little change that we do instead of being a DM roll. Whoever the caster of the resurrection spell is, or the user of the scroll can choose who will roll that final roll, whether it's the person being resurrected, whether it's uh, someone else in the party, whether it's themselves, or if you'd like it to be me. So Iska, having learned from Omen about this when you were up in Elevation Pit, um, there is, I, I know you've got a gym. Uh, this does uh, use the gym. Um, so, uh, I know you've got the components that you need, but if you'd like to explain to the party. Um, so I, I can start casting, I, I can start performing this, but, um, the, the spirit, Cilia, it, it can be easier if she has something familiar to latch on to. Um, if a few of you could just do something, say something, anything that you think would help bring her back. That is what we need right now. Just anything you can muster to anchor Celia to this point, to bring her back to this body. Anyone. And she kind of looks around the party. Well, I mean, I don't know if it's me. You'll reach under his mane. Actually, he'll get a knife out. Reach under his mane. Cut off one of his dreads. Pull it out. There, tied into it, is Celia's ring. Nice. <laughs> it's where he hit it all this time. 
<laughs> and he'll sort of, uh, don't need that. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, that's, I guess, something that's got a lot of influence on her. So, how, how would you like to invoke this ring? <clears throat> was such a big part of y'all's history as a group together in the Black Dragonflight uh, syndicates mm. and finding Gwilin Fiora, all of that. How would you like to invoke this ring as a way to call out to Cilia? Um, he will actually get ahead of and grab another thing from hopefully maybe on Sylvia's belt, which is the Wandering Tribe dagger that got silvered. Mm -hmm. and he'll have those both there and sort of put them um, he'll actually, by the way, he probably would have broken the rune before Yes. when we started this, so yeah, he let yeah. them know that break it at the last moment mm -hmm. and then when things can't take effect yeah. Um, he would the, these are sort of I trust Celia and I, she trusted me enough with this um in many ways, just like the rest of you, she's part of my family. And uh, I want to hold on to that. I want to hold on to that. That trust that we formed even through, you know, who she is and what she does. And these, this curse that was put from her. And I want to hold on to that. Um, yeah. Bonds of bonds of metal and bonds of blood. <laughs> and um, I, 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 I guess throwing a life rune into that so I can make an account check. So I would say that since, uh, as you say, bands of bonds of metal, bonds of blood, and as it is the blood rune you begin a draconic ritual, breaking the blood rune with the knife of your tribe that Celia has wielded and carried. The ring tied onto it in a ritualistic fashion with your own hair, one of your own dreadlocks. And transform the blood rune to a life rune to sort of channel this magic of Iska's. Yeah. So do me an Arcana check. Uh, with advantage. Are we allowed to use the, are we allowed uh, to use dice on this? I'd say not, but uh, yep. I don't. I was going to say the 26. Yeah. You <laughs> as you break the blood rune and do this action on Cilia's corpse and the fact that you were the one who actually released her you sit there in the breeze across the dragon vessel plains which had almost seemed to have gone silent for a while there's just a breath of it that ruffles your mane as you're bent over the body and perform this call out to Celia's soul. Who would like to go next? I'll go next. Unless someone else is going to go before me. Okay. As I've tried to make her look as comfortable as possible, um, Fada sits next to her the whole time. It's all going, what's all happening? I'm looking down at her, she says, from the depths of, from the depths of the glyph scale, cavern, across the vice, back through time, and to here. Celia, as will me. I don't know what, have, what I would have done without you and everyone else. 
when you made that decision in the cabins, it sparked something. You gave me someone else to fight for other than myself and patrons and divine deities. It grounded me in a way. And you showed me how to dance, you taught me how the world works around. And I don't think I can pay that back. The only way I can do it is by protecting you somehow. I wasn't able to do that today. And hey, you landed another great hit, but I'd say it's no guarantee for success. And one thing I've learned is being mortal is we're all alone with our thoughts unless we're with others. You appreciate the darkness of the shadows. You've even given them to Lyle. Come on back to Asilia. There's so much more to do. Please. Come back. And it's like lean down and give her a kiss on the forehead. I raise my head back up and, and I say, the shadows will be here for you, waiting for when you return. You may think it's cold, but we're always here to keep you warm. Come back. And you'll cast um, darkness in the surrounding area. Just before, just before the, you know, he's gonna gather whatever eldritch might he can, and just create a little glob of darkness, focus just into a little ball into his hand, and put it into hers. Just so this little ball of shadows that she she so well truly loves, this plate of the plains and roof walker, is has a way to come home to the shadows. So, do me a persuasion check. I'm going to give you advantage with the casting of the spell. For, of darkness to invite her back to the shadows because I think that's pretty cool and u- unique. I'm 18. I'm 18. I'm pretty happy. <sighs> Anyone else? Don't have to have three, but you can have up to three. Do it, Luna. Luna looks like she's ready to go. Yeah. Okay. So Luna will sort of just uh, kneel down by Celia uh, and touching her holy symbol. I've no gentle words for you. There's work to be done. Work that only people like you and me can do. We do it so others may sleep well. I am here, and I will help you. But now is not the time to rest your weary bones. You we push, and we push until the job is done. This world's penis is on our shoulders. And I think she'd do a religion check, kind of invoking the penis that got her. No, absolutely. Okay. Um, yeah. There it is. Yeah, 15. Okay. 
with that axle over the body on one side, the dar on the other, holding her hand with the shadow, Luna to the other side, with her head bowed, holding this sitting there in the field of the dragging gust plains. They now nod to Iska. Iska has been like playing very low notes this entire time, kind of drawing out the spell. Will um, lower herself towards Celia and just hearing everyone's contributions, just um, just whisper to her. Um, it's on you now, Celia. Guide yourself through these shadows as you guided me. Come home. And um, Jeanette, I think there's no one else who should do this role but you. So just roll me. If you want to, you can click on death save, or if you want to just roll a d20, it's your call. Wait, make a GM roll so Jay can describe it. <laughs> I'll describe it regardless. I know, but then we'll have the tension, the extra tension. Or if you'd like to whisper roll it to me, whisper roll me a d20. Sorry, I meant whisper GM roll that. I'm sorry. Yeah, whis okay, yeah. Whisper roll that. Whisper roll that. Give us that juicy tension. My poor little heart can't take this. You didn't even offer. My Kokoro. Huh. Okay. Okay. As you all stand there. Whoa, eek. Sorry. <gasps> you feel the gathering of this music as Iska plays, the diamond at her hand raises into the air and begins to spin over top of the body and rises up. The light begins to play off of it, begins twinkling as it spins faster and faster. You see the breeze around you begin to pick up as the grass lays flat as more and more energy comes pulling into this crystal it almost turns insubstantial as it then lowers down and presses onto Celia's chest stops and just lays there dormant there's this pregnant pause as you all wait and then you see as it sinks down into her chest and <gasps> Celia takes a breath and comes back to you. Welcome back. Morning. <laughs> uh, she like just kind of like lays there and just like looks up at uh, the sky and she says. Well, that was different. You okay? Uh, are you okay? 
You know that um, tradition you told me about, like the fingers and the, and the like the rings and um... <laughs> yeah. Hi. Um, she uh, she kind of scratches like the back of her neck, reaches in her pocket, and pulls out Vidar's finger. <laughs> <laughs> oh gross. Uh, so you're so you're, you're pat the head, you're good then. <laughs> God, this is silly. Is the ring still on it or is the ring did you take the ring off uh, uh she actually put the ring on her own finger before she walked off. <laughs> you, uh, looks up the rest of your... We are one weird bunch. No, 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 no. You're a weird person. We're just involved in it. <laughs> and honestly, like, half of us have died and come back to life. If anything, Cilia's just joining the club. Okay. Wait, half, half of us has died? I thought only two. Celia's back and alive again. Luda then switches Three. her attention immediately to the other people. Who are you? She's like on her feet. Um, standing respectively aside, you see uh, the two of them have their heads bowed and look up at the party and goes, Yes. We need to have talk. Oh boy. And we'll take our Wonderful. break right there. Uh, Yay! <laughs> Yay! For pun of the week. And, no! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you on uh, the cast. It, it, amazing uh, contributions there for the resurrection. That was lovely. <laughs> um, we will be right back. And until then, uh, Luna will uh, tell you a little bit more about our station and get you prepared and primed and ready for Pun of the Week. Hello, You're never ready for Pun everybody. of the Week. If, you, if this is your first time here, welcome. If you've been here before, welcome back. This channel is run 100% for charity. There do change roughly every other month. This month we are supporting Mental Health America, an organization dedicated to early diagnosis of certain mental conditions, just like your physical health, your mental health, you also need to check on. They have lots of good resources. If you'd like to know more about them, please click on the purple letters in the description below. That'll take you directly to their website. If you like to donate to them through our channel, click on the banner above that and I'll take you to the Twitch page to do a donation. Well, how do you donate, you ask? Well, after you click the banner, you can donate a varied amount of money and see how, and depending on what you do, you can do things. Like for any amount, you can add to it a spell bank. As you may have heard earlier, we're currently at a level four spell, and we have not yet cashed in. And at every $100 increment, it goes up. So we're at 400, four, level four, 500, level five, so on and so forth. And that again is any amount. For a dollar, you can give a player a D10 healing dice. We use the free action. For two dollars, you can give a player an advantage to use on any roll that's not a death save. Three dollars, a D12 bardic inspiration to be added to any roll. Again, set death saves. Five dollars, which is a luck dice. That's just a mulligan. It can be for healing, it can be for damage, it can be for a two hit, it can be for anything except the death save. I think you're getting the rhythm here. For $10, you can give a party member a random potion from the party punch bowl where we get to roll dice and see what we get. And for $25, you can donate an action surge to any player. But please don't feel pressured to donate. You can also do things like our social media, like Instagram or Facebook or Twitter, all the lovely websites. Otherwise, hope you enjoy the rest of our show. Let's see, do we have... No oh, good guys, not yet back. Oh, there we go. Good guy of the pie. Do you have a recommendation? I do. I don't remember if I've recommended this before, but it's a very good book, and I, it's I, I I'll shill it again if I have or not. It's okay. the subtle art of not giving a censored word. Ah, I don't uh, think you have recommended that before. If I have not, then uh, here it is: uh, a book written by Mark Manson. It is a very interesting way of uh, self-help, essentially. 
So for those people who may be stuck in a bit of a rut, having uh, issues mentally or um, just just trying to find a bit of self-improvement, uh, this book is sort of made for, uh, made for that. Um, it takes a bit of a counterintuitive way of dealing it. Actually, that's exactly what it says, a counterintuitive approach to living a good life. Um, and it teaches a way of managing your attention giving not completely ignoring everything or but prioritizing things and uh it sort of isn't it isn't light on the idea of taking responsibility for yourself and your own actions as well as garnering the idea of just because where what position you're in it wasn't your fault it is your responsibility of the consequences to deal with that. And it's an interesting way to deal, uh, do it. It may not be for everyone, and um, but it certainly has helped me uh, drawing uh, sort of some slumps in my time. And I think uh, it may help other people, um, but it's definitely not a, everyone's mind works differently and all that stuff. So I can't recommend it to everyone, but if you're still struggling out there and you haven't found a self-help book or advice that may not be doing it for you, uh, maybe give this book a go. It's got some uh, good advice that's helped me. Um, and yeah, that's uh, all I can really spiel about that one. All right, thank you very much. And my off-screen peanut gallery said it is a good book. They apparently have also read it. Um, and now that we've had our recommendation, it's time for everybody's favorite segment. Pun of the week! Go on. What kind of cheese can make you bleed? What? Sharp cheddar! <laughs> so. I actually have a recommendation as well. Of course, I just ripped the bag open. But my new thing, and again, because we all do stuff for different ones, is uh, Quest Protein Chips. I actually am real tortilla-style ones. I've tried a whole lot of, like, having something that fulfills that need for, like, having, like, tortilla chips or having something with salsa, like, a lot because I love to have like like chips and things like that. And these are actually the first ones that actually, first thing, texture and taste t like actual like tortilla chips. This happens to be the nacho flavor, which actually does taste, basically it tastes as though you put like a Ortega, or ta like a taco seasoning onto a, um, onto like a, uh, you know, a chip or whatever. But here's the big thing, this entire bag, is only five grams of carbohydrates and is 20 grams of protein. So this is like the equivalent of like two thirds of a chicken breast uh, for those of you who like to have, yeah. I, and, it, and it tastes like you're eating Doritos. So that's my recommendation is Quest tortilla style protein chips. Their potatoes, they're like potato chip style ones are awful, just terrible, but they're tortilla style ones. And you can get them on Amazon. We're a food review channel now. The indie thing is going downhill, I think. I have no idea if you can buy them in Canada. You know what you can't buy in Canada? Funyuns! Oof. Horrible. I mean, yes, they're bad for you, but also I want them. Well, on that note, let's dive back in here as uh, Rian and Nate look up this sort of dappled gray mare uh, stallion beside them sort of tosses its head as some of you still gathered around Cilia, Luna in monk-like faction jumps to her feet to confront these strangers that she has no idea who they are, why they're standing around, why any of this is going on. Um, they just look at you and go, yes, we need to talk. We 
helped your friends here. They were being attacked by, well, her until that one. And he points to Axel. Did something very peculiar. Oh, dear. Thank you for your assistance, then. Who are you? I am Rianne. Rianne Gilderloin, and this is my partner, Nate. Gilderloin? Yes. Are you here to see Rachel? No, Florian, maybe. How do you all know that name? Uh, two. Uh, met him. Yeah, two. Can I two. make an inside check on this boy? Certainly. Oh, yeah, two so. lad, long blonde hair, uh, kind of a dick-ish, but like, I'm sure he's got a good side somewhere in him. What are you trying just, to read off of him? So he keeps on being confused about how we know Florian and kind of being very defensive against the questions. So it's to my wonder and to the b bewilderment that Isker is actually functioning out of this, uh, you know, the plane hasn't gone exactly according to. Isker is right here and perfectly fine where she should be in a suspended animation. Something's happened. And her being here, I'm just trying to figure out is, uh, is he, he's being very defensive. He, he's very defensive about who he is, like in regards to the name. So I'm just trying to piece together. Is he, is, is he who we do, don't, do not think he is? <laughs> um. <laughs> Is he Your insight or... check, as it's just insight and not mind reading. <laughs> um, I'm going to get back to my coffee now. Yeah. Is that he is genuinely bewildered how you know that name. Um, and you can pick definitely pick up on his bewilderment. Um, and it's not so much defensiveness of just curiosity. I would say. Kind of a dick, you say, he looks to luck. I know. You ever, you ever kill a Neverwing? We're really at over with that? Uh, uh, he, it's yeah. Madar, what do you expect? Uh. He also owns a griffin. Is that? Yeah, a griffin that, uh, excuse me, yeah, excellent. yeah, you know what? No, uh, wait, I'm sorry. Come with me. Oh dear. <laughs> and he walks away. Uh, are we? Are we doing? Are, 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 are we doing this? Are we here? Over the mental link, uh, Iska go. Oops. <laughs> oops. What kind of oops? <laughs> okay. Is it the battle? Luna is just. It's, I think basically Luna raises an eyebrow at you, if possible. No, no, you're the manager. You guys sort this out. <laughs> the time walks away. Line. Looks good to look at Iska, uh, like. Vida, can you mm. check in the ring? Oops. No, wait, no, he's not there. Never mind, don't worry. I'll be no. silly. No, that's not wrong. Right. We didn't uh, get there yet. Okay. Uh, how do you oops? What do you mean, oops? Done a thing, haven't you? So, is this an oops that I don't want to know about? Oops. Remember how I brought Cilia back and everyone was very happy about that. Anyway. Right. Okay, I've got that in my mind right now. Okay. So, I, how do you feel I, about that? <laughs> <laughs> From what you're about to hear. I'm, I, I'm, 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 I'm mentally prepped. I'm, I'm not going to scream, I promise. So, so I, had, I had a few options. I, I could, I could, I could do things from where I was that would that would make minor changes and could maybe help all of you out. Or, or I had an option 
that I didn't truly understand or fully oh, understand no. or even oh, begin no. to understand. Oh, and no. I could take that and it, it called out to me to um, maybe rewrite a little bit of um, hey. the world. I am uh, going to be right back as hey, Luke look, walks I off. <laughs> I'm going to be right back. I need, I need some moments. A shout out to Luck. Get the I horses didn't know and we'll you were the follow. kind of person to call someone a dick to their face. I'm going to get the horses right now. I'm sorry, <sighs> we're a little overwhelmed. Um, Who's just going to follow me in? Yeah. Yeah, yeah Axel would as well. Yep, so, uh, yeah, he does, he's basically at this Actually, point not saying another word. He is beelining it towards uh, a small copse of trees over... Uh, actually, a familiar one. It is the copse of trees that you all uh, basically hid the wagon in uh, on your first trip here. And with that, I'm actually going to help Celia because you know, I don't know what she's suffering from from Ray's death, and there might be some little. Who oh. knows? Oh, you know, just one hit point, four levels of yeah. exhaustion. Okay. <laughs> all right. Let's. Let's just, you see this ring as I raise her hand up as we're walking. Let's just take that ring off you and put that on here. Doesn't fit that one. Shit. Put that on here. <laughs> doesn't, doesn't feel right. Would you like to go for a, would you like a nap or did, you know what? You, you'll be fine. Have a potion. I'm going to hand her over one of my potions. Okay. We're going for noodles tonight, by the way. Are we? Yes, I met a wonderful uh, noblin in the alley. I think we're just getting the hell out of here. <laughs> oh, we can get takeaway. Anyway. Um, as uh, luck, uh, do me handle handling as you grab the horses, just to see how this goes of you rounding up horses in your state. 18. <laughs> On an 18, you actually, I mean, your frustration sort of lends itself to all but just calling these horses out. Just like, here, you know, use dad voice on the horses. And they respond quite well to dad voice. Um, you know, actually, Grain basically uh, snaps to as well. It's kind of like, oh, you, we're in the shit now. Um, <laughs> basically, attitude of Grain. And uh, so uh, you all luck a little bit further behind unless someone else was helping him with the horses all sort of follow into this uh, copse of trees and you see uh, Rianne sort of push back uh, as it's high summer now there's a lot of vines and a lot more foliage here than there was before sort of push back uh, between a couple of trees and sort of all but disappear it's um, you wouldn't have expected just that amount of sort of vines to give a full cover to a person. And you watch as Nate uh, leads Balshirian in as well. And out of view. But I'm sorry, can we no longer see them at all? You cannot can... see them at all. You just see where this, uh, basically he pushed aside sort of this all but curtain of vines and stuff and stepped behind them into uh, sort of this uh, you know, shielded uh, heavy cover area. Can Luna also move the vines this side? You follow? can. Okay. He'll do so. Uh, do you step yeah, through? Axel. Yep, step through. Axel, go after Luna. Uh, as, Actually, no, as you all step through, you find yourself in an open courtyard of a small house. Uh, there is, oh, is a neat. yard. It is sort of shaped like a U. Um, and you walked in on like sort of the open side of it. Ahead of you, there is two doors. You see there's a stable to the left that Balshirian is now uh, over there. Nate is... Uh, taken Balshirian there. It seems as though Bal he basically pointed and Balshirian went uh, his own way. And uh, you can see as Florian, uh, as Rian and uh, Nate head towards the main entrance way to the house that's straight across from you. Um, Axel, do an Arcana check. 
Uh, Vidar can do one as well. This is neat. I like what you've done with the, you know, the space. Um, Axel, it's been a it's been a long damn day. Um, uh, Vidar, however, having dealt with many pocket dimensions in your life, you are able to recognize that this is uh, some sort of arcane construct, uh, sort of pocket. Uh, dimension, some sort of living space that is conjured and um, that you've entered into. This is some, as I, I speak out loud, this is some nice little alterations along the quality of line of a wave. Huh. Some higher tier magics, isn't this right? Um you are sort of speaking to Rian's back as he's headed into uh, into the main house. He was, was a little bit ahead of you as you stepped in. So yeah, he's pretty much the same. Great. Anyway. Go on, Celia. Uh, Have you drank that Luna. healing potion yet? Yeah. Celia, are you, Celia uh, Iska, are you uh, waiting for luck in the horses before passing through, or... I'll, I'll wait for locking the horses just to make sure they know how to get in. Uh, you do sort of see behind you, as you look behind you, you can sort of see there's this arched opening that is about the same shape as the curtain uh, foliage, but you can't actually see through it. It just sort of looks like sort of a gray portal from the inside. Um, Luck, you are there with six horses in this small copse of trees. Iska standing there holding back a curtain of vines that just don't seem, just kind of look like more foliage behind them. Right now we're just walking into a forest. Great. It's great. You step through. <sighs> yeah. So it's more gradually. Yeah, it's more magic. You step through. I don't a... listen. I'm not going to meta game this, but the meta gamer in me wants to say, "You just flew last episode, buddy." I don't want to hear he, more. He's not. He's I'm not. Ha- he's, he's, right? he's, he's, yeah, he's not happy. He's still not happy. <laughs> so, and how well did that work out for him? He fell to the ground and got killed, or nearly got killed. Because you didn't just drop them both. <laughs> He tried. He just wasn't he quite fast enough. What you should have done was thrown him in the air and just hope for an ever wing to fly past. Dropping them. That was your problem. Yeah, he's it he's he's in a uh, too much information mode. Like, have you ever heard of seismic toss? <laughs> so uh yeah, you uh it's magic. You're in the courtyard yep. of a fairly I mean it's a nice sized house to be in behind some leaves um, in a in a small copse of trees um, there's a stable where you can with enough room for all the horses he puts the horses in there and it's like uh, I've got a lot of thinking to do uh, are you going I assume there, is the rest of the party right, what's the party doing are they going to head inside a luck are you going to stay with the horses or head inside <laughs> Luna you were right behind uh, Rian so I assume you went in and me and Silly would be we Silly would be just behind Axel you're going slow yeah so he's yeah. going real slow um well no if you yeah I, I think Axel's probably gonna even be behind you guys and just taking up rear guard particularly with Silly in the stage she is and... yeah you're, you're more or less being like half carried but for da, you know underarm all that jazz you know, like, yeah, okay. You, you, we're gonna find you a couch. We're gonna sit you down. Animated objects just float along on a seat. Just. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have anything to put you on for animated objects, so I didn't. Um, we follow inside. <laughs> we'll uh, we'll actually go with Luna right now. You uh, you walk in. It is actually a fairly well appointed. Uh, sort of living space. Uh, Rian walks in, uh, heads immediately to the right into a kitchen area 
where uh, he uh, starts to fill a kettle with uh, there's like a hand pump. Uh, he fills it with water and begins putting. He goes, "Do you care for some tea?" Uh, Luna will conjure her usual water bottle. I'm oh. fine. Of course. Hey. You say tea? Require assistance. Kind of hold it there. I pump water myself well, and it's not. It's conjured as well, so. But I appreciate it. Um, do the rest of your friends, could they use they a cup? They will take tea. Um, Keep it in mind, Luna, uh, no, it's just saying, oops, I'm going to take it your full first name is Florian. Yes, no one's called me that for quite some time. Do I know you? This version of you, no. This version, you say? Fate's a funny thing. Indeed it is. My life has been touched by fate before, you see. Raises an eyebrow in interest. I need to talk to your tabaxi friend. All right. They will be along shortly. I'll get the tea going. X will travel through time and mess things up sometime. <laughs> um, as he's making tea, uh, Vidar, you were saying you, uh, do you come into the kitchen or are you sort of on the outside? Yeah, I come straight on in, following in behind. First see that find, it's just whoosh, Zillia. Yep. There's mainly chairs. Press. This is not a huge kitchen. There's mainly a uh, sort of living space with a yeah. large table um, outside. Um, as you're sitting down, you actually see that the table seems to get larger to accommodate uh, everyone here, um, Riley and everybody. It's, it seems to modify itself to the purpose that it is needed for. And uh, he uh, looks to Luna. So, um, kind of a dick, huh? I had the fewest problems with interesting um, your big friend uh, I can always offer something stronger ale, wine I'm sure he'd happily accept it he has trouble with magic that he doesn't use at least understood I'll see what uh He's in the mood for um, the kettle comes to a boil, and Florian, or Rion, this is going to take me a second, guys. Rion uh, looks out, um, and I have hot water for tea, but the, uh, the house can provide whatever we need if you would like prefer ale or if you're hungry or beer, wine what would all of you prefer? I believe for some myself included alcohol might prove useful in our um, conversation to come ale ale I'll take ale uh, you want any? Uh, you think that tastes nice? Bacon um, water? Yeah, something. Uh, I don't know. Sweet, I guess. I I don't really drink that, but I won't want to be rude. Yeah, I, I, you know, if it'd be fine if you don't drink it. Oh, okay, I'm good. <laughs> Like he puts it, looks to Rhea. It's like, it won't be rude. <laughs> um, it, uh, don't you say it's rude. Having, uh, attended a party at Florian's house, hmm. you are struck by how different Rian is. 
he is offering drinks, hospitality, pouring beverages, serving them himself. Even Nate sits at the table and as Rian uh, serves him, it's his physicality, his movement, everything is different. It's not just sort of his short hair and the fact that his actual physical form is obviously someone who has seen recent activity, perhaps battle even. It is his whole demeanor is humble almost cordial and curious of course he eventually takes his seat um, actually not at the head of the table just at another seat at a side of the table Quite a nasty business out there, I have to admit. My first intention was not to intervene. I would have hated to see you killed, but there are more pressing concerns in the larger world right now from than me getting involved with what at first seemed might have just been someone wanting to steal some horses. It wasn't until you, he looks at Axel, made that symbol on her that I chose to act. What was that? What can you tell me about that? Are you familiar with the dragon glyphs? Not by that name. I mean, that's kind of what they call them, but runes, dragon runes. I've heard their study, but not seen one actually used. Most I've seen is them used as decoration for those trying to act more powerful than they actually are. Um, I'm not really sure as to why it's me, but apparently uh, fates and heritage um, from the south, in fact, have led up to me uh, being able to learn these. I mean, it's not easy, and there's a whole bunch of confusing, terrifying things, but The scales and the sort as well. And histories of that. So how did it come to pass that the me you once knew is no longer here? That's... Is that one of these runes? Uh... It could potentially, but um, no, I don't have X. There's so many things it can do that I don't know. No, that is um, not something I can do. Is this actually here? Okay. Or is she still back with Luck and not in the room? Uh, Jay, I was waiting to hear where I was. Yeah, uh, yeah I, was I assumed that you had made your way inside. The question was whether Luck was staying outside with the horses or whether he came in. It He'd give it a few moments and then walk in. And Axel just like ale. <laughs> yeah. And um, you see uh, Rion disappear in and come out with a frosty mug of ale for you. Luck. Oh, I. It is magic, but it works. I, I'm. Look, I'm in such a position right now that I don't know what to say anymore. Magic, not magic. Assassins, not assassins. Timeline, not a timeline. What is it all, really? I mean, we're still all figuring it out. <laughs> I'll um, make the next one a bit stronger. So, it's not part of... So like, Axel's not going to volunteer a skip for anything at this point. 
but yeah, it's not something I can do. Do you sure, have a I... cup of tea to hide yourself behind, or...? No, I... I'm annoyed. Um, <laughs> there's a lot. That's a lot that's happened today. Um, she will look at um, Rian and just be like, the person we know, the Florian Gilderloin that I know is nothing like you. He is a self-absorbed, entitled brat who hides behind the walls of the Arcana Mystica who is nothing but an errand boy and a servant for the Archmistress, who at one point fought against another wing, fought against her, but forgot who he was. You are not that person. And I don't know how you are here now, as you are now, but I believe I am responsible for it. I saw you, you were injured, hurt, in a coma, the old you. And when I connected with your partner, with your mount, Balshirian, he was not a mere horse, he was something different. But through that, I was able to change the threads of fate that bound you. I didn't know what that meant, but now here you are, and I don't know who this person is, but you look like the person you were always meant to be. The person you should have been. The person you need to be for what comes next. You see, oh, it's... at first, it almost, almost out of habit, you see him begin to what would look like cast a spell and then he stops and holds his hands normally if someone said something like that I would check their mind myself but there's too many details that you know for it not to be true you see you're only pot right I did fight a netherwing on my griffin Valshirian I didn't and the archmistress was a part of that her memory stolen from her but two years later, I was in a battle and Balshirian fell. And so I left the Sky Mages as they were beginning to dissolve, as it was all falling apart. I knew I needed to protect the others who were there that day in case for some reason the Archmistress learned the truth. But There's something else, you see. And he walks over and you can see there is sort of saddlebags that were on Balshiri and the horse. And as he picks them up, he goes, I've always named my horses since then after my griffin. to remember and to keep him alive even though he fell what caught my attention you see 
about your friend and his runes is that I've seen that rune before. It took me nearly a lifetime to be able to see it. And he brings over the saddlebag. He's got a book. And he pulls out an egg. A griffin egg. And marked on it Axel, you can see it. The rest of you look at it. The egg looks smooth. You see the blood rune that is also merged with the insight rune done in in verse to hide itself from anyone looking for it. Basically. Ice egg. It is beyond your current skill. How long have you had that? That's an interesting story. You see, all the divinations said that this egg was destined to be the leader of the griffins and the sky mages in the greatest battle our world has ever known. But right before the hatching, something mysterious happened to it. Ah. Most talented mages said there was markings on it, but no one could see them. No one could identify them. It's almost as though they would slip from your mind as you would try to study them. Many thought it was a verification of the prophecy that this egg was marked by the gods themselves. But then on the day of the hatching, when Only myself, that egg, and Nathaniel were allowed in the room. And I tried to bond with it. My mind chilled, my body drew cold, almost as though like death was taking me. If it weren't for my squire, Nathaniel, we both would have been lost. He broke every protocol and took another egg from the clutch and swapped it out with this one. The unhatched marked egg was kept a secret from everybody. And when the Netherwings showed up, legend being that it was cursed, that it had been cursed by them to protect themselves. But when Balsherians fell, and I left Balathira and the Sky Mages, I took it with me. And it wasn't till six months or so into my wanderings that I met a strange old crone in a small mining village. She had a young child who was an albino. And she told me there was a spirit following me around. And she took that spirit and put it into this feather. And you see him take out a long royal blue pinion feather. You see, it was Balsherian spirit who was still watching over me. And she bound it to this. It's taken me years to be able to train myself to even see the rune. Well, and these other strange markings. And he turns the egg around. And Iska, suddenly you are able to see 
because on the other side of the egg, opposite from the rune, is the familiar configuration of Lutuxian Isles. you a caster of these runes and someone who can bend fate it's too much to not believe but impossible at the same time is it? <laughs> Who's to say? That's... I don't... I don't know. I'm... Runes are different based on who scribed them and their familiarity. There's no, they're not magical. They are instinctual. They're not, you know, mechanical constructions that work the same. Their same room may affect things differently from caster to caster. I, from this, I can judge. Um, not well. This one sort of just sort of scribes it in the air mm -hmm. the version of the inside room that I don't know that one but it looks like it's there to hide something and uh, the blood room has several uses the one you saw was to put something living in stasis hold them I can only last for 24 hours and then they will break but indefinitely perhaps if somebody was familiar or powerful enough or there's many uses uh, blood which is the blood rune and that has its connotations as you do me a, a arcana check with it can i have a closer look please yeah, as you take a closer yeah. look does it is it his is it his sort of scribing it is you're absolutely your blood. <sighs> it is your freeze blood rune, one hundred percent. I. Oh, I haven't done this yet. But that's that's my I don't know one of those but the other one I do it is the same it's the same structure and the same intents maybe this was the changing point but I don't know what I'm doing there the point where fate changed and there was a different Balshurian. He will look into his bag of holding. And he is a feather still there because he has a feather of the other Balshur. Ooh, and it was in a bag of holding, wasn't it? Wow, okay. Yeah. Um, because he can't really store it anywhere else. Safely. Yep. You pull it out and you see this feather that you know was one of Balshirian's pinion feathers. Uh, do me an intellect check. I'll give you advantage on this. Intelligence. 20. That's fine. Yeah, dirty 20 works. Um, this feather you pull out is 
at least 30% larger and stronger than the one around his neck. And from all of your notes and drawings of Balshirian, it is the same pinion feather. His Balshirian was not as powerful as the one in your timeline. Uh, that's the turning point that changed all the things. I'll take that another drink now. I think yeah, I'll, I'll have one too. I think I'll join you. Can I, can I have one place? Yep. All around. He actually doesn't get up this time. And uh, he snaps his fingers and invisible servants. Yeah, come. I mean, it was a mansion. He, yeah, it's, as you guessed, it is a it is a mansion. Yeah, nice. Oh, uh, boy. Very humble mansion, but it is mm. a mansion. Great. I am. So what does this mean in the long run? Uh, it means that Florian is not unconscious because the secret has been broken. It is why I was keeping an eye on Sojourn's Crossing. It's... There are two others who are potentially in danger. Has something else changed? If... Mm. Who? The other two who were there with me. Actually, there's five of us. There was Krom. Eva. Either. Ravenia. Lavinia, the druid. The tiefling. The yes. tiefling. Oh. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going around I the knew, table at Gen Con. <laughs> last time I knew Lavinia was in the forests. She is still and there. Eve was on the far side of the vice, unless something. She was there and. She made no mention of going stress. to the. She made no mention of going to the conclave. Convergence. Uh, As a nullifier, it, it, that it, when he talks to, uh, that she's a nullifier, you apparently she was not affected as much by this yeah. event. She would most likely remain in Falcon's Crest. Okay, so she's safe. Is Ravinia? That was my charge, and I don't know the location of Dolgrimmar. Uh, yeah, he's no fine. one does. Last time I saw him. <sighs> you all are all full of surprises, and I don't want to know unless you. Think no, I wasn't he's going to tell you. I wasn't going to tell you, best. and I really shouldn't have mentioned yes. that. But no mind peeking. I wouldn't dare. They're but, yeah. most likely after me as well, but I will not be easy pickings. I have already warned Ravinia, or attempted to at least. Ravinia, she is well hidden, but there are uh, always Ravinia. ways to track people around. <laughs> it was Ravinia, was tiefling was Ravinia or Ravinia? Which one was the druid and which one's the tiefling? They was the they was tiefling. They is the tiefling. Vey. Vey. Sorry, yeah, you Vey. meant for they. Okay. Yeah. 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 Oh. But um, last time we knew she was heading for the conclave. That we is gonna go there. where I'm heading as well. I'm sure there's a mark on my head. You said looking at Iska, I was incapacitated in the other 
the other me. An attack by those who were concerned. The truth came out about what happened that day, just 90 some odd years ago. You and the lot before others. They were coming for each one of you. They got to you. The best way that I know of to deal with assassins is with friends. They don't do well up against groups. It's when they get the drop on you when you're alone or unaware. I just hold Celia's hand a little bit tighter of that. One thing's for certain, then. A little bit more preparation on our, our part, and we'll be fine. We got the inside scoop after all, don't we, Celia? Mine like theirs? These assassins are different. They stick together. They have ways to get through um, groups. As you saw, she looks to Axel and Eska. As you saw when she was against you guys. We still split up mostly. It was only the two of, two of us. Three of us. But yeah. Sticking together seems like a safe. Overwhelming. At least we don't. Yeah. Luna, and I'm, I'm doing this because I just realized it. And so did Luna. She's going to turn to Eska. We don't have a contract anymore. We're not getting paid. That changes a lot of things. I'm going home. <laughs> 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 She's practical. <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> all right. Real time, Linus. Good. Um, uh, she'll actually laugh. You know, we are so far beyond that now. But next to her, you're my head um, negotiator. Okay. Celia <laughs> looks at this guy and says, "Do we still have the invite?" Oh yeah, can we like take ten to really evaluate what has changed? Yep. Like, yeah, <laughs> let's all just take a hey, y'all, y'all. Let's just take a moment and yeah, I was gonna so, have a short rest. <laughs> um, yeah, yes, you can take a short yeah. rest as you all start. Well, I mean, in this world, like, did did, did Celia ever get tasked with assassinating so, the? Yeah, yeah. There's a lot to ask. Like, yes. So, and I, you know me, I've thought of, I've thought about most all of it. Um, <laughs> Iska, especially, but the rest of you, there is a weird sense of disassociation um, that is happening as this new reality is sinking in. Now that you've met Florian, you remember the imitation, you remember the party at the emissaries for the Economistica's abode. But his name is Orthorion Rayferin, is the Arcanomistica emissary to Sojourn's Crossing. Shorter elf, dark hair, quite charismatic. In fact, probably even more so than, uh, than Florian but also much kind of uh, charismatic in a very slimy way. Whereas uh, Florian was kind of more haughty, but uh, I'll send you the name in uh, chat. The, uh, the 
in the station is still uh, validated as you did. Cecilia, you have this weird, you remember having the discussion instead of with Florian about assassinating the tiefling uh, ambassador instead of with Florian with this uh, Othorion, Ray Farron. Iska, you remember his, him, instead of Nathaniel attending, himself attending Children of the Children and giving you the platinum bars and the contract to go around. Not nearly as uh, invasive as Florian, in fact, seems to much more... Uh, feel as though it's beneath him to uh, to do with it. Basically passed it off, passed off what he was told to do and then went on to his own uh, business. But for the most part the biggest change seems to be to Florian himself. A lot of the pl political structures, the uh, things that have occurred um where Florian was involved, all but seemed to have been inserted with this Othorion, Ray Farron. So you are still getting paid. All right. Okay, saving the world's back on. Let's yeah. go. <laughs> Hey, it takes money to save the world. Everyone wants to be like, oh, no charge. Look, people got bills to pay. The butcher's meat isn't free, people. Yep. <sighs> um, Axel, as you are holding the egg, you watch as the insight rune and the blood rune, and you see another rune that you are totally unfamiliar with flash just for an instant before disappearing and all three runes break uh oh well I guess it was on a timer or something. I mean, he sort of just, you know, turns it around so Rian can see that the runes are gone. There was another one there. Maybe it might be, I don't know, some sort of trigger to break the others, or maybe it was just time. But the egg is... I'm presuming unsealed. And he'll just sort of hand it carefully back to Rian and get up his paper and scribble down that last rune. <laughs> um, yeah, you just saw it for an instant. Um, and uh, we can talk about what it was later. Yeah, he was, he was trying to figure something out. It was just a rough shape. And I'd have a book to reference it against. As you sort of pass it across to Florian, uh, passing it sort of across uh, Riley. Um, oh. Riley uh, sort of looks at it, doesn't touch it, does this a little bit as it's something fragile, but you sort of see his eyes light up. Uh, Dad? Yeah, hi. He nods the egg. He's hungry. Baby Griffin. The 
the baby griffin's hungry. And how do you know that? Because I, I can, I can feel him. He'll take a look to Rian to see the reaction to that, because <laughs> Rian's eyes go wide and he just downs his beer. <laughs> He's not even hatched yet. <laughs> this is a sort of everyday Rian for. Uh, Who's for sitting us. next to Axel at the moment, other than Bryla? Who's on the other side of Axel? Vidar. <laughs> He's just gonna like grab onto Vidar's arm with his like hidden hands. Like, <laughs> I don't know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> Neither does <laughs> mentally. Neither do I. <laughs> Everything's going out of whack. This is fine. Uh, I mean, maybe hungry is the wrong word, but he he needs. I don't know. He's been waiting a long time. Wow. He says that out loud. Uh, it's an egg. I don't know. Hug it. Really? I'll try it. It's the best I've got. If Rian is not doing anything at this point because he's the one most knowledgeable about this. He... He's like, nope, I'm out. No, he's he's like, your guess is as good as mine. We're far out of, I think, any of ours. I don't mean to pry, but, um, what is he? Uh, this is my son. He, he's right. He is a part of the life room. Oh. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, um, just to throw another um, question into the mix, I summon Lyle and ask him, do you know anything about hatching eggs? Sit on them? I know there is a bit. Do we? Rian, you gotta sit on it. Uh, I will I say, say it's been a very durable. I've traveled with it quite a bit. I mean, I've many times thought it might have gotten damaged, but it never has. Okay. That, was, that was the rune. But at this point, the rune has gone. Yes, they're awake. Is it a good morning kiss? Maybe a gust of wind. Like, Ryan, would you please try touching the egg? Yeah, I, Axel doesn't want to... Yeah, he sort of just nods. It's like, Axel doesn't want that to be the option, but... I know, but Luna said it. <laughs> yeah, no, but it's it's probably the, at this point, and if, if Rian is not doing so at all... Ryan, Rian doesn't know what to do. Yeah. He is just as confused as you are, because I've carried it for 90 years. And this is the only time anyone's done anything. I've. Well, I mean. I slept, I... had it in my bunk many a time, thinking I needed to keep it warm for many years. It was locked uh, in a safe in Balthira for a while. It, it was locked away by the room. It was stasis held. I mean, you know, held throughout perpetuity until the room broke. And now it continues on normally as just as when Celia was frozen. She was unfrozen at the point. The question is. Do you want to hatch the sick? Or do you want to act or bond or do you want to bring a griffin into a world where it can't fly? Yet. At the yet he smiles. Now we 
talking. Wonderful. Looks like we're all going to the conclave. Convergence. The evil one. Oh, I thought, I thought we were punching some never wings in the face, but yeah, we can Eventually, do that as well. we'll be doing that too. We can I do mean, both. I'm on board with that as well. Wonderful. Um, let's uh, let's Leon. start. Let's start drill training. Duff is over. Holding the egg, sort of offers it out towards Riley, and Riley lays his hand on top of it. And Axel, you see the life rune begin to light up. And you see Riley's eyes turn deep, verdant green as energy begins to flow out of the rune and into the egg. The feather around Rion's neck starts to pull on its chain, lifting out of his shirt, and almost as though drawn like a magnet towards the egg. And you see this wispy blue energy begin to flow out of the feather and into the egg. The two energies, the green from Riley and this blue spiritual energy from the cobalt feather sink deep into the egg until it's glowing inside. And then there's a resounding crack. As you see a small baby griffin head crack and pop out of the egg. It looks around the table, looks up into Florian's eyes, and something strange happens. in a voice that should not be coming from this small griffin. Well, wasn't that interesting, as you hear Dalshirian's familiar voice. And that is where we will end today's episode of The Vice. Five more pints! <laughs> <laughs> So, all right. Hope you all enjoyed that. Uh, let's go around real quick and uh, meet our players and where we can find them also out on the interwebs. Dragons or Cats? Hello, I'm Dragons or Cats playing Vidar Lycran, and you can catch me all over the webs as Dragons or Cats, and especially on the Twitch and the Twitters for some Monday night and Wednesday night D&D games over here in Australia, which is... 7.30 p.m. Australian Standard Time or 5 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, I think it is, something like that. Oh, well, who, who knows? Anyway, uh, great session. Next up, Templar Warden. Hello, I am Templar Warden. I am playing Hidden by Axel, the dad who doesn't know what he's doing. Um, <laughs> you can't find me anyone in it. Also, the dad who figured out, oh, yeah, I've just done some freaking shenanigans in time and now I've got to fix them. Thanks, future me. <laughs> Presumably. I thought I could just blame this guy. Could just blame this guy. Speaking of... Anyway, <laughs> oh, yes, uh, I'm you sorry. can catch me anywhere on the internet at Templar Warden on the internet. Now you can catch me on Twitter at Rena Templar. You can catch all of us in the Discord if you want to chat the session or just hang out with us. Put in the chat and you can join us there. And now... Bird vs. Plane. Oops, I'm Bird vs. Plane. You can find me everywhere across the internet at that. You can find me on Twitter where I post garbage. You can find me at Twitch where I play garbage. Uh, come hang out. Another fun session. And 
gone next week for conference, but hopefully back the week after. Uh, we made a deep voice, baby. I feel good about that. Uh, next up, NNG9. Hey, I'm NNG9, your local puntress. You can find me at Twitch at NNG9, on Twitter at NNG98. Because Bird said it, I have to do it because it's in my head now. Oops, I did it again. I messed with the fates. Got lost in the weed. Oh, Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, deep voice, baby. <laughs> deep voice, baby. <laughs> um, next up, good guy pie. Speaking hi, of everyone. deep voice babies. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, hi, I'm good guy pie. Uh, this has been fun. I have been playing your very conflicted character right now. He, he just, he just doesn't know anymore. Dude, 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 dude has too high. Dude has wisdom out for days, but that ain't going to help him anymore. Not, there is no amount of alcohol for this character to make him feel better right now. Uh, you can also find me at Good Guy Pie on the Twitches, where I'll be streaming. I, I will be doing the good old horror, uh, horror of October when it, uh, when it finally rolls round. So get ready for that. We'll be playing some lovely spooky games. And we'll also be on Too Good Too Guy on the Twitters. So you can catch me on there. Oh, yeah. Oops, hey. my ass. <laughs> and last but not least, Tree Hugging Druid. Back from the dead. Oh, yeah. I am back from the dead. Uh, hi, I am Tree Hugging Druid. You can go follow me on Twitter. I don't really tweet things, but I retweet when things are happening. Thumbs up. Sorry, as I put my stuff in my mouth, I thought you would be longer. Um, I am Tall Squall. I am your DM. You can find me here in pretty much all of the internet as Tall Squall. Um, I it's fall, so I'm playing WoW again. So I might be streaming. I don't have a regular schedule, but keep uh, hit that notification button or watch my Twitter for when I do. Um, as I am finally leveling up my Paladin through Legion, um, and then on to um, uh, Battle for Azeroth. So. I haven't done any of the in-game content in Battle for Azeroth, but I wanted to get the Paladin quests done over there. But in the meantime, uh, all of us here uh, will be back here. Not We're actually canceling next week because we have three players missing. So we will not be back next week, but we will be playing the following week. And once we get out of the crazy summer, hopefully we will not be uh, on and off as often as we've been off and on. Um, yeah. I said that right. On and off as much as we have been off and on. Yes, that. Um, but anyway, um, thank you for all of your donations. Thank you for supporting our channel. Thank you for the retweets out there and all that kind of stuff. I hope you're enjoying our story. And until next time, gather your friends together and tell your own story because that is what it is all about. Thank you so much and good night, everyone. Bye-bye. Timey-wimey. It's always the timey-wimey.